we have seen that any m times n matrix implements a mapping from Rn to Rm. It is a function prescription. But how does this function look? How does it work? Let us look at some basic properties to get a feeling how the mapping works. This video will answer two questions. Given an element of the domain, how can I find the function value in the codomain? And the other way around, given an element of the codomain, can I find an element in the domain which is mapped to that particular element in the codomain? Although these questions are new, you will see in this video that solving these questions only requires techniques you have already learned. So let's take a look. Let us look at a transformation from R2 to R3, transformation implemented by matrix A. So we go from R2 to R3, so that means that we need a 3 by 2 matrix A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, x. And we look at a few factors, u1, minus 2, 1, v1, 7, 8, 9, and v2, 7, 8, 10. And then we'll answer the following questions. Question A, determine the image of u. Question B, is v1 in the codomain and is v2 in the codomain of t? And same question for v1 and v2, but then in the range. It's of course silly to ask these questions over here for u1, for u, because it doesn't have enough components. A, determine the image of u. The image of u can be found because uh, t of x equals a times x, that means that t of u, the image of u, equals a times u. So we have to compute the product matrix A times the factor u. Use the row column rule as usual. And then we find minus 2 plus 4 equals 2, minus 4 plus 5 equals 1, and minus 6 plus 6 equals 0. So there you go, the image of u. Where's question B? Well, it's very easy. We can answer them straight away. The codomain of t is R3. That means that all vectors with three components are in the codomain of t. Since v1 and v2 both have three components, they are both in the codomain. Then we go to question c. That one is a bit harder to answer. Is v1 in the range of t? Well, if I want to find out whether v1 is in the range of t or not, we'll have to find an x in the domain, r2, such that t of x equals v1. So we have to find an x such as t of x, which equals a of x, a times x equals v1. Ah, but you know how to solve this. Now we have a problem of the form ax is b, where a is given, x is unknown, and b is given, where b is in this case v1. We can solve it by forming the augmented matrix and using row reduction. So we augment a with v1, and we start the row reduction, minus 2, minus 3. We just copy the first row, 1 for 7, 1 for 7. Uh, minus 2 times 1 equals minus 2, plus 2 equals 0. Minus 2 times 4 equals minus 8, plus 5 equals minus 3. Minus 2 times 7 equals minus 14, plus 8 equals minus 6. And then uh, for the uh, minus 3 plus 3 equals 0 over there. Uh, minus 3 times 4 equals minus 12 plus 6 equals minus 6, minus 3 times 7 equals minus 21, plus 9 equals minus 12. Okay, that's nice, we can clean up some rubbish uh, there, uh, times minus 1 over 3, times minus 1 over 6, so we get over there straight away, and I see, oh well that's nice, minus 1, well, you can even go to reduce echelon form, you know, in minus 4. You see that we get rid of the last row entirely, and uh, the first row becomes uh, a 0 and a minus 1 over there. And now we can write down the solution. 0 times x1 plus 0 times x2 equals 0. And here we get x2 equals 2, and x1 equals minus 1. So indeed, we have found an x which is mapped to uh, 789 
the x minus 1, 2 is mapped to 7, 8, 9, so that means that 7, 8, 9 is in the range of t. So, oh, there we are. That one is okay. Then the last one, 7, 8, 10, almost the same. So we do the same technique, only a 10 instead of a 9 over there. We do, of course, the same st steps. So we get one more over here because it's just one more. You can do the row reduction steps yourself if you like. But then we see something happening over there. On the last row, we see 0 times x1 plus 0 times x2 equals 1. So it has no solutions. It's an inconsistent system. That means that no x is mapped to 7, 8, 10. That means that 7, 8, 10, that v2, is not in the range of the transformation t because you can find no point in the domain which is mapped to that particular point in the codomain. So now you know how you can find the image of points, now you can find the so-called pre-image of points which we have done, and you now you know how you can find out whether a point is in the uh, range or not.